Do y'all remember having to do research papers in high school or college? Uh, I do. Um, and I also remember that it sucked because whenever I was going to school, we didn't really have the internet. Uh, but I do remember we had to have several sources, at least three or four sources on our research paper. Would you pass the class? Would you make an A if you only used one source? Probably not. Well, the reason why I'm saying that is because I'm, I'm, let me clarify something. I am not saying I agree, disagree, believe, don't believe, but I'm explaining to you why people like me have had trouble trusting something because when people get all of their belief from one source, it makes you think. Now I'm not saying that source is all wrong at all, but my belief system doesn't come from one source. I decided to study beyond the Bible. As in, I just studied the, the culture, um, the original language, the, the text, the, the philosophies behind things, the idioms. These are things that people don't even think about. I know this because I have conversations like that all the time and people's eyes just start rolling back behind their, their heads Whenever I start asking them, tell, ask them if they know the Aramaic culture, if they know the idioms and what they mean, what they stand for. I haven't found one single person other than an Aramaic Christian minister that even knew what I was talking about. But they're married to what they've always been told. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. But this is where it gets to why I feel like I've been battling with Christians for a while. It's not because of their belief system. It's because being judged because I don't agree with something or that I don't believe in something or anything. Just being judged and then being told, well, this says this, so this is the truth. I'm like, yeah, but you don't even know what it means. You only speak English and the translation isn't just a translation word for word. You've got to understand the idioms, the original meaning. Jesus spoke Aramaic. He did not speak Greek. Hebrew was a language then, but Aramaic was the dialect. That, that's what they spoke. They had their own idioms, their own meanings behind sayings. And when you don't understand them, how can you say that you know something so well? But that's fine. That's, that's getting beyond what I'm even trying to say. You can't judge somebody for actually looking deep. It's kind of like starting to date a girl and the only thing you know about her is what her mother tells you and you never know the woman's past or anything and you just get married to her just because based on what somebody told you but you never know this girl's past what she's done anything about it it could end up great but it could also end up a nightmare and there's a lot of confusion when she acts a certain way I mean, hell if you don't know anything about ptsd or cptsd and you have a conversation with me and you're wondering why I don't trust certain things or why that, and you don't understand that I have PTSD. It'll confuse you. You're like, well, why don't you, why are you paranoid or something? Seems weird. Well, it's because you don't understand the context. Everything has context. I'm a firm believer in God being alive. And I know people say, well, of course God's not dead. Yeah, but you won't listen to him. You think I have to have three or four Christians have a consensus about what something means before it means anything. You'll say, well, we'll test it against the word, meaning the Bible, but then you can't even tell me which translation of the Bible is correct and what it means. But you expect me to automatically believe it. No, no, I'm not going to, I'm not saying it's wrong. That's not what I'm saying at all. And of course, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to say, oh, you're saying the Bible is not God's word and stuff. No, I didn't say that. I'm saying you have nothing to do with my belief system. You have no place to judge me or anybody for that matter because they believe something differently, especially if you don't even know about other belief systems and you're judging them. You know, I hear a lot of people say, well, we don't pray to Buddha. Well, Buddhists don't pray to Buddha. Buddha never claimed to be a God and nobody ever claimed that Buddha was a God. 
Allah is Aramaic for the God. All meaning the la God, the God. Well, that's what Jesus actually said when he referred to God. And he prayed to God a lot. In fact, everything he did, he prayed first. You know, a lot of people have said a lot of confusing things to me. And so I had to find out for myself. And honestly, that's the best way to believe anything. How can you blindly believe something just because somebody tells you, I can't do that, but I'm not going to judge you for doing that yourself. Some people need that. Some people have to have certain types of structure to live their life, to believe in God. There's a lot of people that have to go to church to strengthen their conversation with God, to strengthen that bond. I don't. Church is for fellowship. That's all it's ever been for me because I've never gone to church and learned or received a better way or a closer conversation with God. It has never helped my, my communication with God going to church. It hasn't. Jesus is not fighting other religions. He didn't fight Hindu. He wasn't fighting Buddhists. He wasn't fighting Zoroastrianists and he wasn't fighting pagans. The people that he fought were other Jews. And I don't believe that was his intention to fight other Jews. But they're the ones who, who said, hey, you're not doing this right. You're not interpreting this right. Or you can't be doing that. They're the ones who set up all these rules. And Jesus was trying to teach his people love. He was trying to bring them enlightenment. He was trying to help them get closer to God. And the Pharisees did not like that because the Pharisees was in control. I have found that I have more problems with other believers in Jesus. It, it's not the atheists that have tried to tell me what to do. It's not the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, the pagans. Yes, I have friends that are pagans. It's other Christians. And while they're doing it, they're violating the very book that they, they claim that is the word that you're supposed to follow, but they won't even do it while they're fighting me on what I believe. Now it's not the majority of Christians. And like I said before, I'm not trying to fight Christians. I, I don't want to, all I want to do is help those that have been hurt and those that are, that feel broken, those that grew up without family. I want to show them that love is there. God is there for them. I'm not trying to convert them. I'm just simply trying to love them and let them discover the love inside themselves and discover the love that God has for them. And that shouldn't be so hard. That shouldn't be so difficult. Why would other believers in Jesus stop me? Because that's what Jesus said, the number one commandment. When you say the number one commandment, that means everything else is subservient to it. It's second fiddle. It all has to go through the filter of the number one commandment is to love your neighbor, love your God, love yourself. And Paul told you how to do that. And one of the biggest things written in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8 was when he said, love holds no records of wrong. People are holding records of, over people's heads constantly. Oh, you've done this. You've done this. This makes you a horrible person. You shouldn't do this. You're going to hell for this. Just love them. Let God decide. If you don't agree with me, Say, okay, I don't agree with that, but you know, I love you anyway. That's what I tell people. There's a lot of people that believe things that I don't agree with. Most people believe things that I don't agree with, but I'm not going to convince myself that it's my job to change them because I know that I cannot change them just as much as you cannot change me. That's between me and God. I can be an example and that's what a disciple is. It's an example of your discipline and how you follow God. And people can see that and say, you know what? I think I like where this guy's going. I'm gonna watch him a little closer. That's how you get people to follow you. It's not saying, hey, you're gonna lead people to hell. Hey, you're gonna hell yourself. You're skating on thin ice. It's not gonna change me. If you know me at all, you definitely know that's not gonna change me. That's actually gonna make me a little more firmer in what I believe that maybe I am headed in the right direction when I've got people saying stuff like that. I think most people mean well, I really do. But if it's not changing somebody, why keep doing it? 
if your purpose is not self-righteousness and it's legitimately because you love somebody and you want them to follow Jesus the way you do, wouldn't you try to do it in a way that they would actually follow you? Or would you keep beating them over the head, telling them how wrong they are and they're going to hell? I made a, I had an episode about uh, the late Bishop Carlton Pearson and the amount of hate I've received on that. The amount of people that have stated how he's going to be burning in hell. People who claim to be preachers and pastors and ministers, people that claim to be followers of Jesus are gloating about a man who they believe is burning in hell. That's not love. That's not what Jesus would do. If I truly thought somebody was burning in hell for eternity, it would upset me. It'd make me sad. It would depress me for that person. I wouldn't become joyful of it. That's not at all what Jesus taught. Love your neighbors, love your enemies. It's because love is the most powerful motivator. It can change anybody's heart. If you want to get biblical, look at Saul. It was love from Jesus that turned him to Paul. It wasn't somebody saying, oh, look at you, you're doing so wrong. You're a horrible person. Didn't change him. He didn't care. It was love. And it was love that got me to start following Jesus. It was his lessons. But the lessons that I talk about, there's a lot of people that call themselves Christians that have no idea what I'm talking about. I've had people say, Jesus never say, said you could do greater things than he. What? Yeah. Jesus never said to love yourself. He never even hinted about that. These are direct quotes, by the way. When he said, love God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your bite, and just the like, love your neighbor as yourself. How do you love your neighbor as yourself without loving yourself? Judge me all you want, but it's not going to change me. I just pray that people open up their eyes and open up their hearts. And don't be afraid to question everything. Because if it's the truth, then why would you be afraid to question it? Study Aramaic. Study their original teaching. Study the teachings that they said, oh, that these we don't agree with them anymore. The Gnostics. You're going to believe a group of politicians because they said, don't believe this? Or do you want to find out for yourself? They may be 100% true. It doesn't make sense. Don't follow that. But why trust somebody else? Better yet, talk to God. God will tell you. See, God's not dead. I've said it before. How do you think Paul got his answers? Daniel got his answers. Moses got his answers. They didn't get it by reading the Torah. They got it by talking to God. And anybody can talk to God. You don't have to go to a special person to get the answers and then just have faith, blind faith that that one person is telling you exactly what God tells you. Trust your conversation with God. Now, if it's evil or something, I mean, I, God's not going to tell you to do anything that would hurt you or hurt anybody else. But have a little more faith. Don't be so quick to judge others. There's a reason why other religions, Hindus, Buddhists, Yoganadis, they all respect Jesus. They do. Muslims, they all have Jesus in high regard, even though they themselves are not Christian. Because Jesus was a very, very loving, kind, and wise person. Start trusting that love. Because if what you're doing is not loving somebody, then that's not Jesus. Stay in peace. Stay in love. Hey guys, I want to personally thank everyone for liking and sharing my videos. Uh, if you want to continue to see my content, all you got to do is press that subscribe button and... I'll notify you as soon as a new video comes out. I don't get paid for any of this. So if you want to buy some of my merch, like my shirts, like Jesus is a badass or my don't be a dick shirt, uh, you can easily go to my merch store, which is at SOGTV.org, which I will have it in the description at the, every video. So push that, go buy yourself a shirt. I appreciate it. Have a blessed day and I will see you at the next episode. Thank you.